Good morning, everyone. It's good to see everybody here this morning. And uh, I, I could see I guess half of you. I can see half of you. Does that make sense? Because you have your mask on, so I can only see half of you. Um, but uh, I will be glad when the day comes when we don't wear masks at all anymore. I don't know if that day is ever coming, but I, I, hope, I hope that it does. Um, and by the way, let me just say uh, a couple things about the co-workers retreat this, uh, this afternoon. Uh, if you have not signed up for that, um, let me encourage you, even today, even right now, before they order lunch, okay? Um, if you say, you know, Pastor, I didn't sign up, but I want to come. Well, I will gladly share my lunch with you, okay? I'll go find some Madelines or something. <laughs> To, to eat, okay, and I, I'll, I'll gladly share my lunch with you, um, and I don't think the lunch is actually ordered yet, so if you sign up now, you, you could still be a part of it, okay, um, and the reason I'm asking you to be a part of it is because it is, uh, and we've never done this before, but this, we're starting this year, is that we want to present to our coworkers, our volunteers, and people who just who just, uh, they want to see our church move forward, or they want to maybe in some way be a part of that process. Um, we're going to cast the vision of this church for next year. Um, not just the English ministry, but the entire church. And then we're going to uh, break out into two groups where we're going to sit around tables, and you, you, you're going to get to have some input uh, and how we implement uh, some of the things. And, and so if you have dreams about this church, the things that, you, that, that God has given you a vision for, that's the time for you to express that vision. And so let me encourage you uh, to be a participant. Do you know that the very word uh, koinonia, which means fellowship, the very word, the definition of fellowship means participant. And so let me encourage you to be a koinonia, a fellowshipping member, okay? Uh, not just to attend, but to be involved and to participate uh, in the process. The other thing uh, is next Saturday uh, is the water thing. You know, we, <laughs> it's gotten cooler but that's okay. Maybe we'll heat the water and say, hey, here's some warm water. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, but we'll st we're going to uh, go down to the street corner at uh, uh, Nordoff and Reseda and just, just love on people. It may be 10 or 15 people, maybe hundreds of people. We don't know. But we're just going to love on people. And we're only, only going to do it for a couple hours, okay? And so we'll meet here at 1030. We'll go down there, spend a couple hours there and then come back and then go about our business. Hopefully we'll get to do it uh, over and over again. You know, I think, I think you'll enjoy it. Um, we are continuing in our series on the Lord's Prayer, and today I'm just going to tackle one, just one verse, okay? And we're going to that, get to that in just a minute, and obviously you're going to know just what the verse is about. But um, I want to open with this, that I don't, I don't recall, maybe you do, maybe you don't, but I, I, don't, I just don't recall ever meeting someone who didn't like bread, right? I mean, bread, it's just, I love bread, especially if you have salted butter. Unsalted butter, eh, but salted butter, okay? Uh, but bread, oh my, just, there's just something about bread. It's something about bread fresh out of the oven. Right? Uh, I don't know anybody who doesn't like bread. There's all kinds of bread, right? Uh, some breads I like and, and some I'm, I don't care for. Uh, some breads, uh, they go with certain meals, right? Uh, and then some with others. Some are good all by themselves. There's uh, sweet bread, yeast bread, unleavened bread. Cornbread, flatbread, fruit bread, biscuits. That's part of the bread. Cracker barrels, 
buttermilk biscuits. Buns? I mean, who doesn't like those King's Hawaiian sweet rolls, right? Uh, there's rye bread. Sourdough bread. That's one of my favorites, sourdough bread. Pancakes. That's a type of bread. Dry bread. White bread. Leavened bread. Soda bread. Is that made from soda? No, but I, I hear that there is one soda bread somewhere uh, where they bake in a silver dollar in the middle. And then they, they gather around, the family gather, gathers around, and they slice it, and then they, whoever gets the silver dollar is like, that's the lucky guy uh, for the year or something like that. Bread comes in many forms. I'm just wondering is, if, if you have uh, memories of certain breads. So when you smell this bread or you, you get to eat it and then all of a sudden, boom, just like that, it takes you back to a time and place. It takes you back to your childhood maybe. It takes you back to a place where you used to live or a country or whatever. There's a couple of those for me. Let me just show you a picture. Number one, this is the melon pan. Okay, it means melon it's made from melon melon pun now in japan in japanese they say uh, they, the way they say bread is pun and the reason is it was the portuguese that went to japan initially introduced them to bread well instead of coming up their own word for bread they didn't have bread before that so they would just say it's pun even today if you go to japan and if you have if you see bread they will call it pun which is Portuguese and Spanish. So that, when I, when I see that, or when, when I see that in the store, I have to get one. And it takes me back to my childhood days. Now, ironically, um, it, it's more nostalgic than anything. Um, because in, when I was a kid, it tasted a whole lot better, I don't know why, than it does today. But still, it brings me back memories. The other one is what we call uh, in Japan, nikumanju. Okay, and in Chinese, they call that something else, right? I don't know what they call this. What is it? Something, yes. Okay. <laughs> but you put all kinds of things in the middle. You put, uh, this one is, happens to be pork inside and with some vegetables. And boy, when I, when I get one of those, it's, I'm just, I'm just having a moment. You know, I'm just, well, go sit in the corner somewhere. I don't want to be bothered. And I just want to enjoy it to its fullest. Now, here's some pictures here that they may uh, conjure up. They may, they may sort of trigger you, it seems. Let's just see some of these pictures. Krispy Kreme donuts. Oh, I don't know what about Krispy Kreme donuts. But, man, now that's the type of bread, right? Donuts are a type of bread. Okay, what about this one? Wonder Bread. Did you grow up, watch, uh, did you grow up eating Wonder Bread? Yeah. I don't know how healthy it is for you, but it certainly has a good, good name to it. You know, it's like you wonder what it's doing to your system, right? Okay, then this third one here is, uh, what is this? That's rye bread. That's pastrami on rye bread. Boy, pastrami just goes with rye bread, doesn't it? Yeah. And you got to have rye bread when you're eating pastrami. It's good stuff. Fourth one is, that's a, what is that? No, that's a, that's a Philly, that's a Philly cheesesteak, right? So that's a hoagie, okay, uh, man. And of course, the, the last one here, the last one, what is that? Matzah bread, okay, so that would be the bread that Jesus was talking about when he said, give us this day our daily bread, now, obviously, you know by now where I'm going with this because I just gave you the verse, Matthew chapter 6, verse 11. Now, he says, give us this day our daily bread. What did Jesus mean by this? And how does this verse apply to us today for Jesus' followers 2,000 years later? Give us this day our bread daily bread and that's what i hope to do today is to connect you believers connect us two thousand years later with the words that jesus uttered uh in in the prayer 
So let's ask the Lord to bless our time together. Let's pray together. Father, we just want to commit the next few minutes to you. God, we want you to speak to us through your word. Holy Spirit, penetrate our hearts and our minds that we may be able to grasp not only what your word says, but then be challenged and have the courage to live by faith and not by sight. So we commit this time to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. So for context, I want to read the whole prayer and then we'll go back and look at verse 11. Verse 9 says, Pray then like this, Jesus said, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now, depending on the translation that you might have, uh, in verse 13, you may think that I have omitted the last part of that that says, and for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. But there's a reason why I left that out. The reason is because those words are not included in the original or earlier text. And also, if you look at the uh, theologians, historians, the earliest church theologians, Augustine, Origen, Cyprian, and Jerome, you'll find that they, they make no, uh, there's no commentaries on those last words. And the NASB and some of the other translations, you will see them in the square block uh, 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 whatever you call them, the signal, the symbols there. And that, that means that when you're, whenever you see that in the square blocks, it means that, that that phrase is not in the original or earlier text. Most likely what happened was that they began to use this prayer in church liturgy and they added that to complete the prayer and then it made its way into the Scriptures, but it's not in the scriptures. There are numerous passages like this, uh, and they usually have those uh, square brackets, at, in, uh, at least in the NASB they do, which tells you that, that they're not part of the original text. Now, does this mean that the translations that had this uh, included, is it, is it a bad Translation. No, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that. But what it does mean is that you should be aware of them so that you can study the Word as accurately as possible. So let me encourage you, as you study God's Word to, and go deep into His Word, that you understand uh, where the words have been added in some translations. Last week, we looked at verse 9 and 10, which is all about getting your heart rightly tuned with God. Remember that? It starts, the first verse, two verses start with how we are, we are to get our right, uh, have the right mindset, the right heart toward God before we begin asking and petitioning God for basic needs. So now let's look at verse 11. We, call, we may want to call that the bread verse, right? Verse 11, give us this day our daily bread. Now, obviously the sentence here is written in English so that it's the way we talk, so that, so that we can understand uh, it's, it's smooth talking. But if you take the original Greek, the word order, I mean, it's way, it's way out of order. Uh, it, it actually reads differently. It reads, the bread of us daily give us today. Now, if we talk like that, it would sound funny. You know, we would be like a bunch of Yodas in Star Wars, right? We just kind of get the words uh, out of order. But when you read it that way, give us this day our daily bread, what word is emphasized? 
the word give is emphasized. Give us this day our daily bread. Or give us, the phrase give us. It's all about us. The emphasis is on us. Now I looked at 41 different English translations. You know that there, there are that many English translations of the Bible. There are actually more than that. But all but one began with this phrase, give us. Give us. So what, what I want to try to do is I want to try to break down each word in order of how it was written in the Greek and maybe we can understand it a little bit better. So it says, the bread of us daily give us today. Is how it's phrased in the Greek. So it's the bread that is emphasized and not the giving that's emphasized. It begins with the bread. Now the Greek word for bread here is artos. You know the pizzas that they toss in the air? It has nothing to do with it, by the way. Okay. Um, but it's artos. It means it has a literal meaning and it has a figurative meaning. Literally, it means bread or loaf of bread or food in general. If, if you were to ask me, Danny, you and Donna come over and we'll break bread together. Now, literally, I would say, okay, I'm coming over and you're going to feed me bread. But figuratively, you're saying something else. It just means we're going we're gonna to have a meal together. Here, figuratively, when, when Jesus is talking about the bread here, figuratively, it means divine provisions. That's what it means. So when Jesus was talking here, he could have been talking about literal bread, the matzah bread, the, the bread that he would uh, uh, break and bless and then pass out in the upper room, or he may be talking about divine provisions. So figuratively, it means all the substance that God supplies to yielded believers. And get this, scene by scene to live in His preferred will. That's what it means. What does, what does scene by scene mean? What does that mean? Well, let me answer it this way. Refrigerator. What do I mean by that? You know, there was a time not far in the distance when we didn't have refrigerators. Rita, you remember that, don't you? Yes, you do. Uh, in fact, they, 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 there are still people alive today who call refrigerators, they call them ice boxes. Right? It's because before refrigerators, before you plugged them in, there were these boxes that were lined with uh, metal inside and, and uh, wooden boxes with metal and, and with doors, and they would put ice in there, and they would, they, put, they would put their things in there so they wouldn't spoil, and then they would have to replace that ice. When the ice melts, they had to, they had to go and replace that ice. So they called it ice boxes. But before that, you didn't store food up for the week. You had to daily go to the market to to buy food for that day. If you left, uh, if the, I mean, you had food that would spoil, so you cook less, you, 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 you ate it all, whatever, but you didn't, you didn't want to waste it, so you went every day. You didn't want the food to spoil. You went every day to buy the food. So you had to shop daily. But what refrigerators have done is they, they've reduced our need for day-by-day day or scene-by-scene scene shopping. They reduced our need for shopping every day or looking for daily provisions. Because now we can stock up. So put yourself in the shoes of people who are, the, who are Jesus' audience at this where daily they had to be looking for food 
Daily they had to make sure that they had fresh food. The, ironically, though, the, the, the only, the only uh, food in their, in their staple of that time, the only thing they didn't have to go look for daily was bread. Because they had the storehouse. Are you recall last week when, or when we were talking about prayer, and Jesus said, go into the storehouse, go into a room, close the door. Most likely, the only other room other than the upper room where they lived, the only other room in the house that had a door would have been the storehouse. And the storehouse is where the grain was kept, it's where the oil was kept, and any seasoning that you might have, like salt or things like that, that's where it would have been stored. So to make bread, they only needed flour and water. Water they had to go get daily, usually twice a day. Flour was stored in the storehouse. And they would, each day, they would have the flour already, but then they would make the bread on a daily basis. Now, if they wanted to splurge, they would add some salt to the flour, or they would add some olive oil for a little added taste to the bread. So people must, they must have understood that Jesus, what Jesus meant was daily provisions and not specifically bread. You know, what I find is kind of ironic that Jesus says, go into the storehouse and pray. And what are you praying? Praying for daily bread. Right? But in the storehouse is the flour, it's the, it's, it's the grain, and it's, it's the oil, and it's the salt, and it's all. The provisions are there. But he says, go into that room, shut the door, and p- pray. Give us today our daily bread. Now, it doesn't matter whether that storehouse is full of grain, full of flour, full of oil, full of salt, or it's down to the bare minimum. He says, go in there and pray for your daily provisions. Interestingly, the less that you have in your storehouse, the more room you have to pray. How about that? And it's kind of curious, isn't it? But we pray the most. When our cupboards are empty. So after the bread of us. There is the word daily. Now the Greek word here is epiosuyas. Uh, it's, it's a compound word. Epi which means fitting. And osius which means substance for, that, for what is coming. It's an anticipation word. So together it means fitting substance for the coming day. Every day when the sun comes up, it it ought to remind us that God has the very provisions that we need for that day. He has exactly what you need for that day. And what your needs are and what He has for you, they fit together to perfection. You might think in your mind that you need more than what you get, but God knows exactly what you need. Notice I said your needs, not your wants. The problem is too often we confuse our needs with our wants. So, now we've, uh, we've covered the, the bread of us daily, okay? It means provisions for the day, the bread of us, the, the substance that we need for today. What's next? Give us. 
That's the word that comes next, give us. So that seems to imply, whenever you say give us, give me, it seems to imply kind of an entitlement mindset. And there's, a, there's another word that I think might be better, at least, at least the way I understand it, it's, it would make more sense to me, instead of using the word give us, using the phrase grant us. It was the prodigal son when he went to his father and he said, Father, give me the share of property that is coming to me. Same word. Now I understand using give me there because the son wanted that. He felt like it belonged to him and he wanted it so he can go do what he wanted to do. But here I think grant might be a better word. I also said last week that that it's not so much about the right word, the right thing to say, the right word to use, but it's about having the right heart. So whether you say, Father, give me or grant me, we all know that it's the heart That makes the difference. The bread of us daily give us today. The bread of us daily grant us today. The word today. It means a day or it means a period. It means a a, a period from the sunrise to the sunset. That's in the noun form, but in the adverb form, it means today or it means, it means now. Don't delay. It means, it means right now. Living day by day is a difficult concept for most Americans. It really is. We have such an abundance. We can't, it's hard for us to grasp this day-by-day day living. It's like we have to go through something catastrophic like an illness or a tragedy of some kind where you literally don't know what tomorrow is going to bring you. And you can only depend on and rely on Jesus. I, th- I think then and only then do we even begin to grasp this day by day trust in God. We live in an abundance of our daily needs. According to the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, 30 to 40% of the food supply goes to waste every year in the United States. That's 133 billion pounds or 161 billion dollars of food gets thrown out every year. Just from the casinos in Las Vegas 40,000 pounds of food per day get thrown out and hauled to the landfills. Most of us stand in front of the refrigerator with the door wide open, not because there isn't anything to eat, but because there's too many choices. We don't know what to grab, there's so many things. And we turn our nose at that and this and that's a day old, that's two days old, or that was, you know, f- several hours ago, and oh, I'm just not feeling that today. But in most other parts of the world, It's what am I going to eat today 
but it's more where is it going to come from today? When you came in this morning, uh, you were given us a, a single piece of candy. I want you to just pull that out. I hope you didn't eat it. You, if you ate it, well, um, you know, you were, you were given instructions not to eat it. But it's a little butterscotch candy. I, I talked to someone earlier today and said, yeah, growing up, I hate these. And, you know, there's a good tasting and all that. But then, you know, you get older and you look at the calories and, you, you know, and your teeth are rotting and whatever. And you're like, nah. Okay. But I, there's a reason why I gave you these. Okay. Now, you can eat them later. Not right now. Don't. This is not communion. Okay. Don't get ready. And, okay. I want to tell you a story. A missionary friend of mine back in the late 80s. As the Iron Curtain was beginning to fall in Eastern Europe, uh, the Lord led him to go to uh, Vietnam and to smuggle Bibles into Vietnam. Now, the, the diplomatic channels were not open yet, uh, and you really you had to go through like Canada and other countries in order to get into Vietnam. There were no direct flights to Ho Chi Minh or um, Hanoi. So he goes and, and he's, he's taking Bibles into the, into the country. A Bible would, would go for four years wages. And so he wanted to bring Bibles to them that, so that they could know God. And he just gave them freely. Well, he took a, a bag of butterscotch candy, mainly because, you know, this is kind of his travel thing that he usually took with him. But he had a pocket full, and he ran into some kids, and he thought, you know, I'll give them each a butterscotch candy. And when he did, he said it was like Christmas. His kids' eyes got this big, and they, they looked, they didn't know what to do with it at first, and then he showed them how to open it, and then they put it in their mouths. And there, he said it was like, it was like an amazing, amazing Christmas. They had never tasted anything like it. They had never experienced anything like it. This little tiny butterscotch candy. It's like the greatest thing they had ever experienced. The bread of us daily give us today. Do you think that maybe relying on God for daily living is a bit harder for us to grasp than those kids? I think so. Now, they may have trouble trusting God because they have so little. But we have trouble trusting God because we have so much. In most parts of the United States, there's no need for God. At least that's what man thinks. Because man has his retirement. He has his bank account. He has his possessions. He has his health care. And the more that we have, the less need we think there is for God. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Whether you have a lot or you have very little, it's the simple recognition that everything you and I have, everything that you and I enjoy comes from Him. And ultimately, it's up to Him. Who do you trust for your daily devotions? 
your daily provisions, your daily needs, you or God. If you are trusting in yourself, you are destined to failure sooner or later. If you trust in God for your provisions, you are in for an adventure. Let me close with this. John 6, 35, and Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this example of prayer and how Jesus taught us to pray. Thank you, Lord, that everything that we need comes from you. The very breath that we breathe, the the air that you have provided, the oxygen, the, the very water source, food, everything that we need to live, Lord, it is your provision that you have provided for us. And what you give us today is sufficient for today. And that we don't have to store up but you will provide tomorrow and the next day and the next day. Lord, help us to live that way. Help us to to live where we trust you daily. The bread of us today. Grant us, Lord, daily. Thank you, Lord, for taking care of us. Thank you for meeting our needs. Thank you for being patient with us. Thank you for showing your love in this manner. Lord, we know that there are some in our midst who struggle financially. I thank you, Lord, that you are the one who sustains them, not their bank account. I thank you, Lord, that you love your children and you provide for your children. Help us, Lord, to remain faithful to you and not to take matters in our own hands because we can't see tomorrow. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's close in our...